Today on New Level. Don't stop your expectation. Don't be afraid. He arrested that thing immediately. He said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Keep believing. Stay with what you said. What you asked me to do was come to your house. I haven't even got to the house yet and put my hands on the little girl, but I'm still coming. Come on, in this room, there's some miracles that you're believing God for. Jesus is still coming, and he's saying, don't lose your expectation. Don't quit now. The Bible says in Amos 3, 7, for the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Hank and Brenda Kuhneman are accurate prophetic voices that are honored all around the globe. They are passionate about connecting people to the word of the Lord and bringing the body of Christ to its God intended fullness and glory. Join them now and let the word of the Lord inspire, empower, and bless your life and bring you to a whole new level. Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when it springs forth, it is a tree of life. Hello, we're Hank and Brenda, and you're watching New Level. And we have come with God's grace and anointing in this season of acceleration to raise your expectation where things begin to spring forth concerning you. I'm excited, Brenda. It's well, a new season. Well, you know, I was just thinking about this word expectation. We've been talking yeah. about that a lot lately. And, and just to kind of define it, the word expectation means to anticipate with eagerness. That means you have an eager anticipation for an answer to prayer, something that God is going to do, something that's about to shift in your life. It's kind of like, you know, I always think of it this way, you know, when you wait for the bus at yeah. the bus stop and, you know, you don't just sit there expecting there to be there three years and, you know, <laughs> bring your lunch and your sleeping bag. And, you know, you're kind of looking down the street. Yeah, you're right. expecting it to that's be there example. at any moment. And I think that's the way or the kind of expectation that we need to have in this season. As Hank said, it's a, a season of accelerated Amen. miracles. And, and this is what we've been talking about on the, this, these programs, is about how to increase our expectation in this season, to be eager to anticipate something right. good. Well, stay tuned through the whole broadcast, because we love to pray for you. We believe that the Spirit of the Lord has something to say through His Word, but also by His Holy Spirit. We'll be right back. We serve a miraculous God, and He has given you miraculous power. For your gift this month, Hank and Brenda want to send you some powerful tools that will teach you to increase your expectation for the miraculous and how to release the anointing within you to experience the supernatural power of God. For a donation of $30 or more, we will send you this powerful four-CD set, Increasing Your Expectation, which will cause you to come into a greater level of expectation for blessing and divine transfer. If you call right away, we'll also include Brenda Kuhneman's book, The Supernatural Natural You, instructing us how to live from the river of God's Spirit and how to unlock the supernatural power of God. Remember, this offer is our special thanks to you and is not available anywhere else. To get these tools in your hands today, call us. The number is 855-777-7907. Mention offer number 517 or visit us online at hankandbrenda.org slash donate. Every gift zone helps us connect people all over the world to the word of the Lord and is changing lives forever. For I'm a man under authority, and I have soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. So uh, this Roman centurion must have somehow recognized that Jesus, when he said something, whenever he commanded something as a leader, there was power on him for it to come to pass. And if he just said the word, it would happen. So now Jesus, after this man says these words, check this now, he makes a comparison. He compares two groups of people. He compares this man's faith and expectation of just speak the word, Jesus. I saw you do it with other people out there on the shores of Galilee. I've seen you do it with others. I saw you. I, he, he must have been familiar with what the Bible says in Matthew 12 and 15. And it says, and Jesus went about everywhere and healed them all. 
He must have been familiar with something and said, if you just say it, it's going to happen. That's how, how much expectation. Come on. Is there anybody in the room this morning you just are going to stir that expectation and say, God, I expect you just say the word. You just speak the word. I'm just going to read that scripture and I believe that scripture in 2017. Come on, somebody. It's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. I don't care how long it's been. I just know, God, if you speak the word, it will be so. Hallelujah. So, Jesus, this man says, do this, and he does it. And Jesus heard it. He marveled and said to them that were standing around, truly I say something to you. I have not found so great a faith, or you could say I've not found such great expectation in all of Israel. Now, that is a large charge. I mean, think about that. I have not found anybody with that level. So that says several things to me. That says, first of all, for to have high and increased expectation, it's rare in a large group of people. It's not as common as you think. You know, just because we can glory to God on Sunday doesn't mean we walk in expectation all week. We have to fight the tendency to negative expectation. He said, I, Jesus said, I'm amazed. I've not found anybody with expectation like this in all of Israel. And so he compares it to this group of people. Look at his words. Verse 11, and I say to you that many shall come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now he wasn't talking about the children of the kingdom like you and I being the children of the kingdom. Jesus was speaking about old Israel. He was speaking about the Old Testament Israel. And just not to get in too long of a Bible lesson, but Israel, let's just say, has some problems. They had developed a negative expectation. They had been brought out of the land of Egypt supernaturally by God's power. God parts the Red Sea and delivers them from Pharaoh's army. They go into the wilderness, and by the time they got on the other side of the Red Sea, Je or Exodus chapter 15, you can go and read it, there was a trial or a challenge. Their immediate knee-jerk reaction response when they came up against a difficulty was to complain. There was no water, and they didn't have anything to drink. Now, put yourself in their shoes for a minute. You know, we always say, oh, I know, it's terrible. If I saw the Red Sea part, I'd never complain like that. Yeah, until your two-year-old is crying because it's thirsty. Nothing can set a parent on fire like a thirsty, wet baby. <laughs> and it never happens when it's convenient. Okay, they only poop at Walmart. I know, I raised them, you know. I never get mad at those poor parents on the airplane, you know. I mean, they're carrying the child, he's upside down, his feet are in the air, the shoes are flying all over the place, they're spit up on their shirt, you know. Um, the gummy bears are on the ground and the goldfish just got stepped on and, you know, I mean, on it goes. And so th this, there, there were children on the other side of the Red Sea and so there they were and those mothers that had five kids <laughs> and of all different ages and they were upside down and biting one another and there was suddenly no water. <laughs> Mommy, I want to drink. Now, just put yourself in their shoes for a minute. But see, the, the children of Israel, when they went through something, had done something. They, they went, instead of saying, no, God, you, you parted the Red Sea just a couple days ago. You know it was three days. You parted the sea uh, uh, just three days ago. So, God, if you did it before, you're going to do it again. I have expectation. My baby's crying, but, God, th that baby's going to have a drink. You're going to take care of it. But they didn't do that. They began to complain. And the Bible said they had developed such a habit of expecting negatives, even though God bailed them out time and time and time again. God got angry with Israel, and they complained, and God kept count. And at one point he said, you have railed against me these ten times. And even though God did miracle after miracle, they kept expecting something negative to come their way. Come on, somebody say that was a negative expectation. 
And if and the and the scripture says the things that happened to Israel were written written for our examples. First Corinthians, I think it's chapter 10, says these things were written for our examples and for our warning that we would not lust or fall into the evil things they fell into. So Jesus said, I'm going to take us back to Israel. There's a, a stark difference between this centurion and what happened to ancient Israel. And, and if you follow Israel's history, those of you that know your Bible and your Old Testament, you'll find out that that negative complaining eventually caused them to wander in the wilderness for how long? 40 years. It was supposed to take a couple weeks for them to get to the promised land and a whole generation had to die off. And then if you follow through into the prophets, by the time Jesus comes, by the time their Messiah, that had been clearly prophesied, by the time Jesus came, they were so far in the negative expectation. The Bible called them stiff-necked. Do you know that negative ex expectation, if you don't force it underfoot, it will grow and it turns into rebellion. Come on, I've had people in my office, we've been at this a long time, pastoring, and we'll have people come in and say, Pastor, I need some wisdom. I just need some prayer. I want to get some spiritual guidance. And we'll sit down and go through the Bible. And they'll say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. See, I'm different. You know, my situation's unique. Yeah, like nobody else ever else been through anything. My, my situation, see, Pastor, um, but, but you don't understand because my story and this is what happened to me eight years ago, five years ago. No, I get all that, you know, and, and here's the thing. You know, when we go through stuff, we think, oh, I'm the only one. I'm the only one that's ever needed a financial miracle. I'm the only one. Anybody ever need to be healed before? All of us. Every person has had an owie. Here's the thing, though. Israel had had such a habit of it. By the time Jesus came, instead of being anticipating of their Messiah, they were now saying, no, the Messiah needs to look like this because this is what fits my description. A negative expectation had converted into rebellion. And instead of negative expectation defined as instead of eagerly anticipating a good thing to happen, it's demanding something be given to you different from what's being offered. And so they had fallen into that. And Jesus said, there's going to be many people that are going to come sit down in heaven and the children of the kingdom are going to be cast into outer darkness. And, and he goes on to compare and he says, for, for but he, when he, Oh, I'm sorry. I switched the page. And he said, many, there'll be gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, go your way as you have believed. Underline that. Or let's say it this way. However you expect a thing to happen, that is what will be done to you. Now, had he had negative expectation, his servant would have stayed sick. But he didn't. And Jesus said, which one are you going to be? Are you going to have positive or negative expectation. Let's go with me now. Let's go to Mark, the fifth chapter. I want to give you some other examples. Mark, chapter 5, story of Jairus, verse 21. Jesus passed over again by ship to the other side, and much people gathered to him. And he was near the sea. And behold... There comes one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. I pray, come and lay hands on her. Now, what did he pray? Come. Now, now, now think for a minute. The centurion, what did he say? Did he say, come lay hands? No, Jesus offered that. But he said, you don't have to go to that step. He said, just do what? Just speak the word. Did he get what he expected? Did he, he got what, exactly what his expectation was. Is that correct? If you just speak the word, it's, it's going to happen. This one, he says, I pray, come and lay hands upon her. If you touch her in my house, she may, that she may be healed. And look at his exact words. And she, shout the next word to me.
she what? She shall live. So his expectation was, Jesus, if you, I know there's a lot of people here, but if you come to my house and you put hands on my little girl that is lying on death's door and lay your hand upon her, she shall live. Jesus, think about this. This is mind-boggling. There's thousands of people standing there that all have sickness, that all have issues. They thronged him because they were maimed and blind and injured. There were sick people. And out of a throng of people, Jesus drops what he's doing and says, I'll come. There must have been something in his expectation. I'll come to her. I'll come to your house. Now, now, now watch now. Drop down. Jesus, the Bible says, went and followed him, and the people were thronging him. Go down to verse 35. But while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house a certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why would you trouble the master any further? Now, here's the thing. May I propose to you that if you're going to develop positive expectation or increased faith, if you're going to develop that, there will be times the enemy will bring an evil report. Yes. An evil report is not the final answer. But they, there was a man that came with an evil report. He said, there's no point. Don't stay expecting. There's no point. Your daughter has died. So why bother with this man? Let him go about his business. It's too late. Come on, I have been told so many times, people will tell you there's always, come on, this is the day and age when everybody has an opinion. Read them online. I mean, the biggest know-it-alls are on Facebook. Dear Lord, everybody has a doctorate. They all have a PhD in nothing. But come on, everybody's got an opinion. Especially the family members and the relatives. You ought to do this, you ought to do that. You shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. You know you're like this. Your mama was like this. Your daddy was like that. And, and you know, and, and people, there's always people that got a report on what you should do, couldn't do, aren't able to do. Come on, may, may I just say that, that there are people that always want the negative report. You can't believe for that. What do you mean about all this rod and holding up your transfer? I, I, that's just extreme. That's extreme. Don't, don't let everybody have an opinion. There's always an evil report. Come on, there's always something. This is a negative world. We have to break the power of the evil report. He said, don't bother the master anymore. Look what Jesus does. He immediately turns to Jairus and said, don't stop your expectation. Don't be afraid. He arrested that thing immediately. He said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Keep believing. Stay with what you said. What you asked me to do was come to your house. I haven't even got to the house yet and put my hands on the little girl, but I'm still coming. Amen. Come on, in this room, there's some miracles that you're believing God for. Jesus is still coming, and he's saying, don't lose your expectation. Don't quit now. Sometimes we quit in the middle. And he didn't allow anyone, verse 37, to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeing the tumult. When you see the word tumult, it's a big deal. <laughs> and then that wept and wailed greatly. So this was a big thing. And when he was come in, he says to them, why are you making this big scene and weeping like this? The damsel is not dead but sleeping. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, anybody ever seen a dead person? Yes. Their heart doesn't beat. They're not breathing. Okay, these people had seen this girl's body. It wasn't breathing. Her heart had apparently stopped. Life had left her. Jesus says, why are you crying She's only asleep. This was crazy expectation. He was staying with what Jairus had already expected. He had already said, you come to my house. Amen. You haven't got to my house yet. 
You come to my house and you put hands on my daughter, she is going to live. And as far as Jesus was concerned, until he got to the house and put hands on the girl, he was staying with what Jairus expected to come to pass. So he said, no, she's not dead. I haven't got there yet. She's sleeping. And the Bible said the people laughed him to scorn. They made a mockery out of Jesus. Imagine standing in front of the firing squad of the relatives and everybody laughs you out of the room. They laughed into scorn, but when he put them all out, can I just say that if you are expecting a divine transfer this year, this is a great time to get away from the naysayers. Amen. And since we're hitting on Facebook, it's okay to hit unfriend. It's all right. Sometimes the, the, the most negative people are in our bloodline. And if you're believing for something serious from God, God took your prayer. When you held the rod up, he took it seriously. God believed your words. Come on, he's still coming to your house. God is still on the way. There's still a miracle with your name on it. And if there's negative people that are trying to steal it from you, that's the time to say bye-bye. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Negative expectation is a result many times of negative circumstances. I really feel in my heart that that's where you're at today. In fact, you've been in a place where it seems like it just seems like one thing after another. It's like here in Omaha, we have snow, and boy, to make a snowman, it comes by a snowball, and it just keeps building and building and building and building and building. Maybe that's where you're at. Over time, it just seems like one negative circumstance after another, and it keeps building and building to where you feel right now like ready to give up. I want to encourage you because I sense in my heart that you are ripe for breakthrough. I sense in this season of divine transfer, the season of divine expectation that the Lord is trying to raise you up to believe that he's not only the God of miracles, but he's the God that will raise up your hope and cause things to begin to spring forth for you in a new season. And so I speak and I declare over you right now that your countenance would not fall, that you would not feel a, a feeling of hopelessness or failure, or that somehow that your circumstances are never going to change. In fact, specifically, I speak to you because it concerning a job, you've been saying, oh yeah, but I've been out of work and it seems like I cannot find gainful employment. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for that precious person that's believing for a job and for gainful employment. Father, I ask you to dispatch your angels and cause things to come now and to fall into place by your divine hand. I break the power of any satanic strategy or hindrance or plan that has tried to cause the things that the Lord is bringing to you to be hindered in any way. I speak now that those things be removed and a new season now of the Lord's hand, His guidance, His provision, and a new job and gainful employment, I prophesy and I declare is yours now in the name of Jesus. And I even hear the Spirit of the Lord saying these words. He is saying right now, the Spirit of God says, what can you ask me for? For it is the time, it is the hour to ask me for bold things, to ask me for the impossible things, to ask me for extravagant things. Ask me, says the Lord, for I desire to do greater and to do more than you can ask or think. And so the Spirit of God is saying to you today, ask me bold prayers, ask with confidence, come before my throne, my throne of grace, and you shall obtain, says the Spirit of the Lord. Ask with faith and ask with expectation, for I anticipate to do great things for you, says the Lord, and I anticipate to do them in this current time, not in the, in the far distant future, but in this current time, it is my desire to do great things among you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. You, Jesus. I want to encourage you, you know, Brenda, and I want to encourage them right now. Yes. I see in my, my heart here, it says that the Lord has shown me a door and a window. And I feel prompted by the Lord to have you start doing something, even at this moment, if you can. But specifically, I want you to begin to do this 
for just a, a period of time, maybe you do it for a week, two weeks, where before you go out the door, you don't allow negative words, That's good. negative attitudes, negative outlook to carry you out the door. Again, it's been negative circumstances building up over time that has lowered your expectation to believe that your situation is going to change. So before you get out that door in the morning, you say something good is going to happen to me. Today, goodness and mercy follows me. And then you walk out that door, even turn around and say, hello, goodness and mercy. You're following me into my new circumstance and my day. In fact, God says that his mercy is new every morning. Expect when you walk out that door, His mercy and His goodness. And some of you, you need to look out the window. Rather than always seeing the sun could be shining, you're seeing a dreary and cloudy day in your mind. Because you've been clouded by fear, you've been clouded by negative circumstances. Start looking out the window and prophesy to your destiny. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Well, start decreeing a thing, as the scripture says, and it will be established. Decree, it's a good day. It's a blessed day. God's for me, and this day I shall see the blessing of the Lord concerning me. You know, Hank, and it's so true that half of our problem when it comes to expectation is our words. That's we really speak true. things that really, that's the culprit yeah. many, many times. And it brings it into manifestation. To bring into manifestation the things that, that we don't want to happen. Right. You know, it's a, it sounds easier said than done, but it's so easy to walk out the door right. talking everything that has gone wrong. And we get caught up in that. And so Hank is so true. Don't get caught up in that today. Get caught up in positive expectation, miraculous Amen. expectation. And that's where the Spirit of the Lord wants to bring you to today. Well, once again, we're Hank and Brenda Kuhneman, increasing your expectation. Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye-bye. We serve a miraculous God, and He has given you miraculous power. For your gift this month, Hank and Brenda want to send you some powerful tools that will teach you to increase your expectation for the miraculous and how to release the anointing within you to experience the supernatural power of God. For a donation of $30 or more, we will send you this powerful four-CD set, Increasing Your Expectation, which will cause you to come into a greater level of expectation for blessing and divine transfer. If you call right away, we'll also include Brenda Kuhneman's book, The Supernatural Natural you, instructing us how to live from the river of God's Spirit and how to unlock the supernatural power of God. Remember, this offer is our special thanks to you and is not available anywhere else. To get these tools in your hands today, call us. The number is 855-777-7907. Mention offer number 517 or visit us online at hankandbrenda.org slash donate. Every gift zone helps us connect people all over the world to the word of the Lord and is changing lives forever. an answer to prayer with my name written upon it. Hallelujah. Join us April 29th and 30th for this year's Woman You Are Anointed 2017. For more information, visit us online at hankandbrenda.org.